Welcome to In Conversation with Manwar Khan podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the Do Not Be a Bystander campaign. You can join us in raising awareness about bullying by visiting do not be a bystander.com and be sure to subscribe to the channel to stay informed about upcoming episodes. Today's participants are Waisil, Jinan, Munaf and Sophia. Our special guest of today's episode is Alona Carletti. I'm your host Manwar Khan. Today I'm joined by four young individuals who are ready to share their thoughts and insights on the topic of bullying. They all have the same goal, eliminating bullying schools in communities. These young individuals are passionate about addressing the issue of bullying and willing to empower others. Today's participants are Munaf, Jinan, Wasio, and Sophia. Thank you guys for joining us today. Before we continue, I would like to introduce our special guest for today's podcast, Ilona. I'd like to talk a little bit about Ilona. Ilona was born in Ukraine and came to Canada as a teenager. Fascinated by human behavior in different cultural contexts, she studied anthropology and languages. Ilona believes in pursuing one's passion. She works on creating better futures through developing public policies and investing in real estate. Today, Ilona will be sharing her thoughts and opinions on the issue of bullying. And I know how busy, Ilona, you are. And I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. All right. Now that we have introduced our participants and guests, let's get started with our first round questioning. My first question is for Munaf. Are you ready? Yep. All right. So bullying is a significant problem that impacts students in schools around the world. This issue can cause by many ways and many, many reasons like physical aggression and verbal abuse, emotional manipulation, and cyberbullying also. So my first question for Munaf is, can you tell me what bullying means to you? And can you talk about different types of bullying and give any example to us? So uh, bullying is like a repeated form of conflict between two people, usually one is harassing the other it's not like a one-off moment it's consistent over a period of time and it's in a variety of ways like physical verbal mental cyberbullying and it is mostly focused on like a flaw that the victim has of some sort like a lack of physical strength or something and So, Muna, I have a question. If I am rude to you today at this event or mean to you today, does that mean I'm bullying you? No. It just Why? means you're in a conflict because bullying is a repeated form of time where it's like, intentional. Right. Exactly. So, intention is to hurt you and it's repeating. That's the two key words here. Excellent. Great answer. Thank you so much, Munaf, for your wonderful insights here. Um, identifying if someone is being bullied may not always be clear, as bullying can happen in various forms. Victims may not always openly disclose their experience. So my next question goes to Jinan. How do you know um, that if someone is being bullied, what are the signs that someone may be victim of bullying? Can you share your opinion on that? Um, sorry, um, I think that I did find that it's like really hard because, well, or if I give an example of like, let's say a group of people, they're like continuously like hitting someone or um, like verbally abusing them every other day. That's very obvious. You're going to be able to like identify that right away and be like, oh yeah, you should like, why, why are you doing that? You should stop. But that's not happening mm -hmm. nowadays. Um, what the person I feel like it's happening to mostly with girls is that 
it just goes over the teacher's head. They'll be like really nice to you and be like, oh yeah, come into our group and like we'll, we'll work on this together. But then you wouldn't really know because they'll be very condescending towards you. They'll ask you um, questions like, oh, like this is that, like really what, what you're wearing. And you wouldn't really know like why you're feeling so negative until like you look in, like, in the background, like these group of friends are like making this weird eye contact with each other and like sniggering and like laughing. So it's just, it's hard to um, identify between like, just a group of friends making fun of each other or if there's actually bullying happening. So I feel like in that case, you actually have to like look at the body language of how isolated a person is being because you can be within like a group of people and still feel very isolated from them. Um, I, I, exactly, exactly. And I, 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 in some of my conferences, I talk about these signs uh, for parents specifically. Like when your kid is coming from school with bruises, and not telling you why and no proper explanation lunch box missing any belonging missing you might need to watch out for something for that so those are the signs as well right so there could be many other different signs kids doesn't want to go to school maybe for some reason i have a stomach ache or something so uh, you might have to as a parents parents needs to watch out for those right anything else anybody wants to add to this excellent victims of bullying like Jinan said that victims of bullying often feel alone isolated and afraid so being a friend to someone who is being bullied can make a huge difference in their life thank you Jinan, for your answer there are various reasons why someone might bully another person my next question goes for Wasio. What do you think are the reasons why someone might bully another person? Well, I believe someone can bully another person due to several reasons, like having their own personal issues, which can range from an unpleasant background to poor influence on others. As they are unhappy, they like to take out their frustrations and anger out on others who they just can't bear to see being happy. A bully can target a person's difference in race, religion, or any disabilities, weight, height, or whatever that makes them feel insecure. They want to pick on someone else's insecurity because they themselves suffer from an inferiority complex which is why they feel the need to be above everyone else yeah great answer Rasul. thank you it is important to remember that bullying behavior is never justified and it should be addressed with appropriate intervention and consequences and we need to report that so uh my next question is for sophia it is essential to understand what cyberbullying is and the different types of cyberbullying so sophia can you talk about different types of cyberbullying absolutely um i think in my point of view uh cyberbullying is any type of bullying that's done through a technology platform um i fortunately haven't had a lot of experience outside of social media of those that type of bullying and it can be towards i mean what i've experienced is towards my age um towards credentials towards merit um it can just be about physical features or who you want to support or who you don't support um and i actually ended up having to leave twitter because of the negativity from posts but also people that message you um, and just all that kind of just pointless negativity um, and I went and ended up going towards LinkedIn where I found people were more respectful there were more respectful disagreements um, just more professional atmosphere and people weren't just negative and attacking you for no reason uh, but cyberbullying can be many different flavors but it's all through technology and unfortunately it's a little bit more new because technology has advanced so much and it's always coming back and or adjusting in new ways 
Um, so there's different forms, but it's all through technology platforms that bullying's through. Thanks for your answer, Sophia. Uh, it is important to recognize these different types of cyberbullying so that we we can be vigilant about that and support the victims. Um, uh, excellent. No, great answer. So with the first round of questions completed, it's time to move on to the second round. Uh, my first question again for Munaf. Um, in the context of bullying, there is a term bystander. Can you tell me a little bit what a bystander means to you in a situation of bullying? And can you give any example? Uh, so a bystander in a bullying situation is someone who is like within eyesight, like is seeing the bullying situation happens, but instead of trying to intervene, they simply move on and don't try to help the victim. Like an example is seeing someone get picked on in like a school hallway or a bus and not helping them at all and just moving on. Yeah, that's a good, so that's, that's, a, that's a good example. So, um, what do you think like um i know that there are different types of bystander what do you think uh what should be our role when we see something like that we should take a stand or stand up or try to help that person right yeah but at the same time we also have to make sure that the situation is safe for us this is the first thing you need to make sure that this is a safe situation to intervene and then you try to help and helping does not mean you have to go jump in physically and help that person it's you can also call 911 you can also mobilize people you can call your friends there are different ways to help right but all i'm saying through this podcast that never when you are a bystander never say that this is not my business this is our business. I mean, if this is happening to your friend or someone you know, it can come back to you anytime and it can happen to you. And you would expect that somebody would be there for you, right? Excellent. Thank you so much, Muna, for your answer. So one of the type of bullying is, as I mentioned, the cyberbullying. Uh, uh, cyberbullying can have serious negative impact effects on victim so my question for jinan is um i already know that uh, sophie already talked about cyberbullying a little bit can you tell us a little more how it can affect someone's mental health okay so um the difference i feel that between cyberbullying and normal bullying is that you can just go home and you can forget about the hum humiliation and everything you can like you can escape that and that could come back when you go, go to school, but you have a very a safe place to be. Um, but with cyberbullying, it's literally the, humi the humiliation is like right at your fingertips. You, it's almost inescapable. So when you keep feeling those negative feelings, it's like much harder to even try and just like to stop, start to stop feeling those negative emotions. Because yeah, you, like the phone is literally made for everything for like I use it for my homework or um, searching things up for talking to my friends and at the same time if I'm being cyberbullied all of that negative stuff is going to mesh within everything within like the palm of my hat so it's just really inescapable yeah and it does affect people's mental health right yeah. can it can uh, give someone depression anxiety and all this kind of thing and I totally agree with you when you say that um uh a uh, long time ago when 20 years ago when we talked about bullying bullying means schoolyard playground that's where now it already have an entrance at home it comes with you to your home so and through the technology right so this is a serious issue right now the cyber bullying and i believe that we all need to know that the impact of that the harmful effects of cyberbullying. Thank you. Thank you for your answer, Jinan. No um, so it is important to stand up to bullying and help those who are being bullied. So my next question for Wasyul is why it is important to stand up in bullying situation and help those people who are being bullied? 
Oh, yes, I feel that being there for a bully victim is the most human thing I could or anyone could possibly do. A person who has been through any form of bullying mentally or physically or even by cyberbullying needs support and comfort so that they can know that they don't need to be brought down by anyone. If we could bring ourselves to stand up to bullies, they wouldn't find the support or motive to hurt anyone else. Yep. No, I agree with you. So it is important to take a stand what, uh, uh, when you see bullying. It's not only bullying. If you see any situation like that, um, when somebody needs uh, help, I think it's a, na it's a normal thing. Uh, our mind says that whether can we help that person and this is not only bullying it could be for anything that if somebody needs help and you know that that person needs help it is our moral responsibility to go and help that person if we can excellent thank you um so my next question is again about cyber bullying um so Sophia, I, I know I know a lot about your work that you do. Um, and I, I, I really appreciate that you taking time to come to this uh, podcast. I know you are very busy. Uh, um, can you talk about how can we how you think that how can we stop cyberbullying? And tell something about the long term impact that victims of cyberbullying, please. Yeah, that's that's a good question. I think uh, following up from my last question or from my last answer um, is so it's through technology and it is rather new. Um, so I think it's really important for I mean, I'm a youth. So all youth knowing who to reach out to, uh, who to go to, who can support you, who can make this end if someone's harassing you um, or how to get away from it. Um, and I know for me, the first two that come to my mind are my school or my education platform um, and the police. Um, however, I do realize that I know I'm not the only one. I have a lot of distrust and lack of faith in the police and in my school. And I go to the Edmonton Public School, so the public school. Um, I find that from the police, I've had my own negative encounters where they have just come to my house and came in and there was no danger. They just wanted to talk with us and no one was at the door and I was asleep. So they walked from the beginning of the house. They walked all the way through the living room, the kitchen, down the hallway to my bedroom. And I was 11 years old and they just came in. So I... It, it was not violent, it was not, it, it didn't harm me in any way, but there's this lack of trust and I don't feel that safe with them. And then from the education platforms, I've encountered, I don't know if a lot of people are aware of the tallest poppy syndrome, but just a quick descriptor of what that is, is it's essentially when a person or a group or the school in this case cuts down anyone that's overachieving or trying to stick out in any way and a few times i have tried to do more outside of the school but also educationally wise try trying to go to university uh, courses during covid when online was an option um, and they held me back quite substantially so there's lack of trust that i have with them as well um, and just not working with people. So I think it, it's really important for, I don't know what it is, if it's a mindset change that needs to happen, or if it's just a willing to be flexible and learn and listen. Um, but for both of those infrastructures, they should be the place that you're able to go. Um, and they need to work on their, on the faith and trust that they've built with people. Um, because this type of bullying, it, it's online. So like I said, social media, it hurts your identity, your self-identity, but also hurts your credibility um, and how people think of you. So it impacts how much you can grow, who you can connect to, um, 
how much you're able to create and you feel comfortable sharing with the world. So, um, I mean, if you really want to hurt someone, you tear them down and you tear down anything that they've done in their merit. So it, it is a big problem. Cyberbullying is a very big form of bullying that's so new and it, it, it's damaging. Interesting. No, thank you, Sophia. So, um, I, 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 yeah, I, I like a couple points that you mentioned. I also want to say that, um, what do you think, uh, educating people, young people, will be one of the solutions? Can be one of the solutions that we need to educate people and let them know that this is not right. People need to know. We need to talk about this more, right? Yeah, it is something we need to talk about more, but it's also something that, again, cyberbullying is new, and I know that there have been many stories that I've heard, and not just from people, like when people go to the police and they're able to trust them, they can't do much about it, or they don't really know what to do, or they really have to kind of keep going to the police until it escalates into something actually physical or outside of the internet. Um, I know that one thing I've always thought of that could, because happily, none of the encounters that I've had have gone outside of uh, just on technologies. Um, but I know that if word filters were able to be implemented on comments, because I mean, I'm in STEM, I'm, I'm rather simple. I'm not trying to prevent people from disagreeing or um, having their own kind of discussions in the comments or just kind of that good flow of conversation and critics and things. Like I'm good with critics, but if you're just being negative, that just doesn't help. Um, and luckily I've been able to find that on LinkedIn. So I don't know if it's a mindset change that needs to happen on these other social media platforms or if there's a word filter. So if you're using these types of words, then you're obviously not actually trying to create a conversation or add something useful besides just critiques some negatively that actually doesn't help anybody. Um, but yeah, I want the good discussions and disagreements, but it, it's... It, it, it's a messy problem, and uh, it is. media is, it is. interesting. And, and I like the word when you say mindset. I want to add two more words here. Is that you cannot be disrespectful to others when you make comments. Critics and disrespectful is totally different thing, right? And at the same time, have some empathy and kindness, right? So all these keywords, I think all is combined with these, right? When it comes to cyberbullying. But thank you so much, Sophia, for your yeah. insight. So with the uh, completion of the first two round questioning, before we move on to the final segment, uh, which is a group discussion, I would like to invite our special guest, Ilona, to share her thoughts on the topic. Ilona. Thank you so much, Manwar, and thank you so much, everybody. Um, to all the participants, I'm so honored to be here. and. It is a heavy topic. It is a very heavy subject, uh, one that I would rather not have in our society. But uh, the reality is that um, you know, at some point, probably everyone has experienced bullying in their life. And I just um, thank you guys for coming here and sharing your thoughts and perspectives and providing us with examples. Um, it, it's 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 really eye opening, and I actually learned uh, from you today. So what I wanted to um, say, some of the thoughts that I had about it is that um, like when you're when I reflect on why bullying is happening, like why it's happening, what are the reasons behind bullying? And um, it's always I try to look at it is that always it's not really about the victim, um, even though the victim is unfortunately on the receiving end of this bullying so bullying really the way i see it personally is that like and you guys mentioned that somebody is angry and somebody feels in, inadequate in some shape or form and they're taking it out on an innocent person who seems to be an easy target and often bullies are getting bullied themselves in another sphere of their life so that's really important to understand 
And um, so there is nothing wrong with the person on the receiving end. So that's what I'm trying to get at. There is something with the person who is doing the action. And unfortunately, the person who is getting bullied um, suffers a lot. Um, and I think you guys recognize that, and it's very much for of you to recognize that. Um, I don't think I recognized that um, when I was your age. And it's very easy to take it so personally and be like, there's something wrong with me. Oh my God, you know, um, there must be something wrong with me. But there is nothing wrong with people who are getting bullied. It's basically, they're just an easy target. Um, that's what um, it comes down to. And uh, the topic of cyberbullying, um, it's a tough one too, uh, because now, you have bullying that is moving from this physical space to, you know, a cyberspace where, like you guys said, it's your at your fingertips, right? Like, how do you move away from it? And it's also, I want to commend you on recognizing that it's important to um, recognize the symptoms of it and the signals and to be able to move away from it. Um, like Sophia said, and um, some of you said as well that, you know, it's um, you can just move to a different platform. And you, when you see people use specific type of language, you don't you don't need to be there. Right. Um, it's learning how to. How to deal with it, learning how to protect yourself, learning how to protect people around you who you care about and the, the protection can look in, in can be in the form of verbal. Um, um protection right so uh for example i know jiu-jitsu for example they're big on um teaching kids um bully proof type of techniques so there is verbal jiu-jitsu there is physical jiu-jitsu and it's all about protection avoidance and not being the victim in terms of behaving confidently and finding that confidence within you and that strength within you so that you're not an easy target um learning so working on yourself um uh, investing in yourself right so that you're able to help yourself you're able to stand up for yourself and for the people that you love um and again like yeah it comes with all with self-awareness confidence uh feeling strongly uh mentally feeling strong mentally and physically so that i love that idea of mindset and um, um how how you view the things just like really reflecting on all of that and it's a bullying is a big thing. Um, it's a big issue. It's a big uh, community issue because it impacts all of us. And um, because it impacts all of us, all of us need to be part of the solution. So um, thank you, Manvar, for putting on this podcast. And thank you so much, all you guys, for coming here and sharing your thoughts. Because this is how we start. We are beginning to become part of the solution by having these conversations mm -hmm. and reflecting and sharing stories, right? And so that we normalize, so that people don't feel alone. Um, um, because it's easy to feel alone and um, take it so personally. And then my last uh, point that I wanted to say is that I think part of the solution can be is that when we remember that people always want to be treated, we need to treat other people the way they want to be treated, but we also want to be need to treat other people the way they want to be treated, right? So, and it goes... Um, on ourselves like we have to reflect how do i want you treated and so that to be able to recognize the abusive language and abusive behavior and move away from it that you know that you're worthy of much more more respect and friendships and um you're you don't have to um take that um type of behavior and um yeah so basically that's what i wanted to say thank you so much guys excellent Thank you, Lona, for your insight. So, um, <clears throat> preventing bullying requires a con community wide effort. So, my here comes my last question for our three part, uh, four participants here: Munaf, Jinan, Wasiu, and Sophia. Um, uh, in three words, can you give me your answer? So, I will go ask uh, Jinan first. What can we do as group? Or community to prevent bullying. In three words. Yeah, say three words. Okay. Um, or uh, just um, kidding. Just say whatever well, you want to say. Um. Well, first of all, we should 
have like understanding of like how like be aware of what people are going through around us and the most important thing is being able to process our emotions i feel like that's like one of the biggest problems is that we're not like, when you're sad the first thing someone says oh don't be sad like that's not how it works we should be able to know how to process those emotions and have understanding with how people are around us as long as we're aware i don't think bullying should be an issue thank you excellent point munaf Just, Would you like to say anything? Uh, yeah, so, like what Jinan said, I think you should try to intervene when you see that someone is <clears throat> like being bullied a lot. But you have to understand, like, if what you're doing, interfering is good, like, make sure it's safe and make sure you're not getting physical. Like, because the worst thing you can do to try and help someone is to fight fire with fire. Exactly. I agree with you totally. Wasio. Well, yes, as he said, we should always be there by the side of anyone who needs help. And we should prevent any sort of wrongdoings by anyone. It could be a friend, it could be a classmate or anyone in general. Excellent. Sophia. I think it's very important that we build trust and faith back up in the organizations that are supposed to be helping youth, but also just in general, I'm even just workplace bullying or bullying that everybody encounters. We need to build that back up. Um, and however, that would be able to work from inside the organizations. Um, and also, Think of any time you write something down or you talk to somebody or you comment something, see it as either a respectful disagreement or a respectful comment. So there's not just this unfiltered kind of word vomit that you'll end up regretting or that will actually hurt somebody else in the long run. Exactly. Think before you write and say. So excellent wonderful i just want to add one more thing here as a community and group um how can we prevent bullying um when i was a kid uh, it's my personal experience uh, at school i would always i had a lot of friends half of friends of my friends were bully they used to bully other kids and it was difficult for me to tell them that okay don't bully them uh, because they are my very good friends um so what I did is um, I became friends with those victims. When I became friends, and then the bullying stopped. They don't bully anymore because they're part of us now. So that was a trick I used. Think about that. Sometimes it might help. All right. I would like to thank everyone. And we are at the end of our podcast. Uh, Munaf, Jinan, Wasil, Sophia, for joining today this podcast and our special guest Ilona thank you for your time then uh, thank you so much for listening to today's podcast uh, before we wrap up I would like to remind our listeners that there are several resources available to help individuals dealing with bullying the government of Alberta has a bullying helpline and the phone number is 1-888-456-2323 bullying is a violation of human rights and should not be tolerated under any circumstances. We have the responsibility to speak up against bullying and take action and prevent and eat from happening for anyone. Thank you for joining in conversation with Manwar Khan and we will see you next week.